What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to the Kelly Cast. And you know what? Can I just can I just nitpick at you for one second? I hardly ever do that to you, but like, I like being able to see myself and what's going on. <laughs> and every time you switch. It bugs the shit out of me getting to a split screen. <laughs> we use my phone to record. <laughs> so I'm sorry that that's the way I have to do it. I don't like the whole split screen thing that you do. I can't focus on uh, that. My eyes aren't that. Right, I don't like that. Right. But we are here for the first week of the 2023 playoffs. Obviously in the 2024 year, but the NFL 2023 season. And there are some matchups to get into. Today, we are focusing on the AFC, Mike, the AFC side of things. And this one might be a little shorter than the NFC one because we're only going to have two videos to go through. Because as you guys know, we here at the Kelly Cast are Buffalo Bills fans. We bring you the pregame show most weeks and consider this most weeks, right? Because yeah, And we banged out a number two, number two seed. So Exactly. I, I, we will be live on Sunday, one hour before game time. That will be at noon on Sunday, right here on the Kelly Cast. Please come check it out. I can't believe I got to get up that early. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> it has. It has been a long time since the Bills played a one o'clock game. And actually, they played the Patriots in December. But yeah, it wasn't hey. too long. Same thing. Last week, Mike, the final week of the season, we had the most members on the predictions ever. And you yes. did not have your finest week, so No, no, I did not fare well. And I told you I was going for last place, but I, I only kinda sort of meant it. I just I just had a bad week. Okay. Well you didn't get last you know. place. I, I can tell so, you that, okay? No, that was that was none other than my lovely wife. <laughs> <laughs> so I get to gloat a little bit. So. Yeah, that's always Thank great. Thank God this is recorded. <laughs> Let, let's give our props where props is due. A new Kelly Cast champion for week 18 in the NFL, none other than our draft expert, Mitch, who went 14 and 2 by tying your best record this season. Amazing job, Mitch. Amazing job. Congratulations. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to competing with 75 people next year. And, um, <laughs> Everybody did pretty well, pretty well in week 18. Every single person on the Kelly Cast crew, including myself and Mike, had a winning record. So I think that that's a thing to be commended. But with the regular season coming to an end, I do have the distinct honor of presenting your Telecast 2023 regular season champion, Michael James Kelly the 17th. Yeah, how are you my cousin and don't know my middle name here, buddy? <laughs> It's not even. It's not even close. That's the joke. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, no, no, we're not related to Jim. <laughs> not at all. No. <laughs> that, that that was the first one of the first things we've said uh, on the podcast was that. But Mike, you do have the hardware over there. How about the Kelly Cast playoffs championship? Look at the shine, like beautiful, mesmerizing. I love. It. I that's 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 the one that counts, right? That's our. Uh... Well, they both count in their own way. You know, you're you're going to have that until the 2024 season starts. But this one is going to be, you know, the one that more people will this, brag about. This is the tournament. This yes. Is yes. This is the playoffs. Our, it's our Super Bowl. Our Super Bowl trophy. Yes, sir. But, Mike, without further ado, we've been talking for a couple minutes here. Let's get right into the AFC. Now, I don't want to start with the playoff teams like I mentioned to you. I think it's best to start with the teams who fire their head coaches because there are all these different stories to tell. Let's a, kick things a off. A third of the league. A third of the league has a uh, coaching vacancy this before the playoff start. That's, that's kind of okay, that's coach, Like that's not head coaches, though. That's... A, a coaching okay. vacancy gotcha. period. Yeah, that, that might so. be a record. But we're going to start things off with one of the most disappointing teams of the 2023 season, none other than the Los Angeles Chargers. Now, Mike, if, if you had to give me a rating based on 1 to 10, how enticing you think the job is in L.A., where do you think you'd fall? I think they've got some decent talent. Um, I think we're... With a little bit of patchwork, they can end up in the same spot as um, 
as Houston. Okay, okay. So, uh, I mean. Now, do you tend to think an offensive-minded head coach is going to work better or a defensive-minded head coach? Because uh, the Chargers are so good on offense. Like, their team is, is good on offense. But the defense is where they really struggled this year. That's a pretty interesting question because then that, that goes back to your argument on how – who who's gonna t- win the Super Bowls more often these days? <laughs> is it is it an offensive coach or, or a defensive coach? Let's go to a surprising one, Mike. The Tennessee Titans and Mike Vrabel, a former head coach of the year winner, a, a guy who brought his team to the playoffs twice, yep. a player friendly coach that you know, like the Tennessee Titans players are just feeling probably distraught right now, knowing that he's not gonna be there anymore. What were your first thoughts when you heard that Vrabel was gone? I think that it was just as shocked as the rest of the world. I mean, I, I think this is probably the most shocking because mm-hmm. I think you give this uh, a guy of that caliber at least another year with, with a team like this. Started to turn it around a little bit at exactly. the end of the year. And, and again, maybe not a small patch job, but, you know, a, There's work to be a done. A couple years down the road, they can be back in contention. Yeah, th- there's work to be done, especially on that offensive line. But it was not Vrabel's fault. And wherever he lands is going to get a hell of a head coach. I, I love Mike Vrabel. You know, he may be a former Patriot, and I can hate that. But let's move on to the Patriots, Mike. I think he might, might, might look good. <laughs> Good. I, I was I was gonna say Washington. Good in Washington. Okay, okay. Very interesting. That that might work. Today, Thursday, January eleventh, twenty twenty four. It's gonna be a day we celebrate for a long time as Buffalo Bills fans. He is gone. Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots amicably agreed to part ways today, and it seems. As though from his press conference, Mike, he's not done coaching in the NFL. Yeah, he definitely wants to get back. But you say you, you say that we want to celebrate as Bills fans, but I want to bring up: is it really something that we needed to celebrate? Because he hasn't done well without Brady. So I feel like it shows that he needs he needs somebody of a of that caliber at the helm to be able to help him call players. Okay. Uh, I, I saved an argument for you from this yeah. when, when we talked about this earlier. You, you mentioned he's done nothing with Brady, and, and I understand where it comes from. Mm-hmm. Mac Jones, as a rookie, came in. Now, I'm not giving credit to Mac Jones. I'm, I'm putting the credit here to Bill Belichick. They made the playoffs with a team that was expected to be one of the worst in the league. He still competed. Now, they didn't win the Super Bowl. You know, I'm, I'm not going to go that far. But first round exit still. <laughs> yeah, I gave up almost the perfect game to the Buffalo Bills, right? <laughs> we can talk about the Patriots all day. Let's move on to the Vegas Raiders, who obviously had interim coach Antonio Pierce, and they are in the market for a new head coach. Now, they've made this mistake before, Mike. I think it was Rich Bia. It started with a B. I forget his name all the time. Biashia. He was like a special teams coordinator, mm-hmm. became the head coach, was really good for the for the interim role, but the team didn't make the playoffs. They ended up going with Gruden that year. And I think the Raiders learned their lesson, and instead of going out and being like, oh, let's poach an offensive coordinator or defensive coordinator from the team, I think it should go to Antonio Pierce. I don't disagree with you. I don't think I have much of an argument. I think he started to turn the team around again at the end of the year a little bit. I mean, with, in, in with, a token, uh, a little bit of a Vrabel guy, like a player-first head coach. Yeah. He's not about the scheme. He's not about... You know, he's about the passion, the the game, really. We're talking Browns and Texans, Mike, 11 and 6, 10 and 7. The surprise of the year has to be the Houston Texans. Yeah, I, I counted them out way too early, and, and I bit the hell out of my tongue, didn't I? From the number two overall pick, and then can we talk about the move, Mike? They had two and I think seven. They moved seven to go up to three. Lost their first round pick for this season. Can we talk about how big brain of a move that is? And Carolina had a chance to get him, didn't they? 
to get C.J. Stroud? Yeah. Yes. Yes, and they skipped him. Yes. So, I, I mean, but I'm, wow. But I'm not just talking about C.J. Stroud. Will Anderson Jr., the that, defensive end, they course. take it yep. at three. Absolutely. They give up the first round pick for this season, and everybody's like, "Oh, okay, that might that might be a top ten pick you just gave up." Nope, it turns out that's going to be a top twenty pick. So, props to the Houston Texans for what they've done. D'Amico Ryan's amazing coach. I really robbery. Uh huh. <laughs> I mean, C.J. Stroud, possibly one of the best rookie seasons we've ever seen. They look good, but are they going to look good against the Cleveland Browns? That that becomes a question, Mike. The Cleveland Browns, who went through three quarterbacks, 10 season-ending injuries, almost won their division. If it wasn't for the Baltimore Ravens being on that run, it, it kind of reminds me of that Flacco run where, you know, the Ravens were kind of just unbeatable, but that was in the playoffs. The Ravens have been a superpower this year. If the Browns didn't have to deal with that, they would have had the division for sure. Mm-hmm. So I think this is a very, very tough game, and I'm very excited to watch it on Saturday. This is our first game at 4.30 p.m. Mike, give me, give me your thoughts, first thoughts on this game. Flacco's been flacking crazy out of his <laughs> mind, man. He, he's been unexpected for, how old is he, 40 now? Gun he 41? slinger. Can, can we just like, say? Looking like he's a rookie. And, and I'll, point, I'll point to one of the things that I, I heard about him the other day from social media. It was like, do you, it said, do you know why Flacco is so much better than Deshaun Watson? And I was interested. So I clicked on the video sure, and I sure. wanted to see what they said. And they mentioned it's like, Flacco goes in with no expectations. It's the same thing I told you about like guys who get benched and then are put back in the starting roles. They're playing carefree. And that's when you play your best is when you're not concerned, you're not worried. And Flacco's just hucking that ball deep. Yeah, he's throwing interceptions, three interceptions a game. Who cares? He's throwing for 300 yards and three touchdowns, and his team's winning. Got enough, like you said, got nothing to lose. He, he wanted to play. He's playing for fun at this point. At 90 years old, you're just playing <laughs> for fun. You know, I mean, it's like my coworker who doesn't. He doesn't want to retire. So, <laughs> but it's time. It's time to go. Sometimes, and. uh I I honestly don't. Uh, it's it's gonna be a tough one. I don't. It it might be time for them to go in the first round with the, with the rookie, but he, I can yeah, see this I, I one going. It, it can go so many different ways. But I've had all week to think about this. I, I've been contemplating: is it Stroud? Is it Flacco? Which team is better? And I am going to take the Joe Flacco-led Cleveland Browns. The decision has been made. The huh? decision has been made. And and one of the reasons I do it, Mike, Flacco undefeated in the wild card round in his career, 5-0. and oh. So I think when, when it comes down to the first round of the playoffs, right, the mm-hmm. wild card round, experience is a big thing for me. And Flacco has it. And maybe the Browns don't. Not all of them. But some of them obviously played there a couple years ago when they made it with Manziel. Yep, but I think I also I also think it wasn't Manziel; it was Baker. I'm yeah. <laughs> I'm blanking on that, but I think this is very tough, and I can see you obviously going with the Texans here. Yeah, I figured you thought that I was going to go with the Texans just because I I picked their jersey, but I, I really was contemplating the Browns very much, and you told me that stat off camera, and, and it's been in the back of my head since you said it, and. I, I've been that guy all year that says all things have a first. And okay. I, I think this is going to be not only all things have a first. I mean, CJ Stroud has set a lot of firsts himself this record this year. And I think that he's going to do it again and uh, okay. send Flacco out on, on the first round. But... All right. Very interesting. I will include the rest of the Kelly Cast crew picks right here. Uh, good luck to everybody, except for the women, of course. We're misogynists here at the Kelly Cast. No, no, no. We, not, there's no we in that one. No, we're, we're not getting canceled together, buddy. Why not? <laughs> family! But, but yeah, family doesn't mean squat. We know that. We're Kelly's. <laughs> uh, a little, little inside look. <laughs> I, I think that this one's really tough. I'm, I'm very excited to watch it. I hope it's a good game. I hope it's I really do. I, I need I need a favor from you for this game, Mike. You always need favors from me. 
Chargers Jaguars last year uh, wild card round. You fell asleep in your chair and left right, me I'll to watch away. it alone. I need you up for these games. I need you energetic. I need you pumped. I need, I need that. Did you Did you see me coming in hot? I, I mean, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out hot too. So. You're, you're looking hot, especially with that Bills mohawk on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get in to the second AFC game that we're gonna talk about today. Again, we're not gonna talk about the Bills and the Steelers. There will be a pregame show live at 12 p.m. on Sunday. Dolphins Chiefs, Michael. Let, let's start with the, with the thing we've already talked about. This could be one of the coldest games in NFL history, slated to be around zero degrees at kickoff with a up to 10 to 20 degree wind chill. And the Miami Dolphins fans are already complaining, Mike. They're already complaining. Protect the players. Protect the fans. Protect <laughs> us. This is unfair. We should play in a neutral site. That's right. We can only make sure players are dehydrated. <laughs> I mean, come on, guys. You play where you play. If it's unsafe for human conditions, the NFL has proven time after time that they will move a game to a neutral site. Yeah, they can so. make sure your sideline's 120 degrees, but you throw some cold at them and they cannot handle it. Did you see uh, the clip of Josh and, and Tua going going a little viral after the game? No. So that they met up. They didn't meet up right at midfield, but they met up on the field after the game. And Josh told Tua, we'll be seeing you in a couple weeks, huh? All right. So he thinks he's gonna. He thinks he's gonna win. That's what he said. That's pretty interesting. So it's, it's pretty, very interesting. I mean, to to Josh's point, the uh, the Dolphins have done very well against teams who haven't. So no. Well, well, <laughs> let's talk about a stat here. The Kansas City Chiefs record is what? Eleven and six, and the Miami Dolphins are also eleven and six. Okay, and the Miami Dolphins. Beat one team with a record above 500 during the 2023 season. That's insane. That's, that's my point. They've been playing terrible, and I know I, I, that, was, that was definitely a pun earlier. I mean, yeah, they've I been mean, awful against them. And they're I on don't the think road terrible the is the word, Mike, because they're, it's not like they're getting blown out. Are you sure about that? But they, they're going to be. They're going to be also. I think we have to take into consideration. Aren't they also still short, Tyreek? No, uh, Ty Tyreek's gonna play. Ty Tyreek played against us. I believe you're thinking of Waddle. Waddle. And Sorry. I'm not sure if Waddle's gonna go. Waddle and Mostert were basically a game time decision against Buffalo last week. So in my head, that means they're gonna go. But I, I okay. can't I can't confirm nor deny anybody playing. The Kansas City Chiefs have had a terrible twenty twenty three. You know, you start off with the Taylor Swift drama with Travis Kelsey, it all looks good for about the first month of the season. And then Travis Kelsey's production goes from number one tight end in the NFL to he's in the Pro Bowl? Really? With those stats? No, Travis Kelsey does not deserve to be in the Pro Bowl. I get it. Sometimes it's a big name contest, and he's the biggest name now because he's dating Taylor Swift or whatever, but that should not be the case. Mahomes has had a tough year, his worst year in the NFL by far. There's no receiving help. Yes, they have Pacheco. The defense, it's pretty good, but... What Kansas City needs is Patrick Mahomes to put his team on his back. And is that the Patrick Mahomes that we have this year? Like, is he built for playoff moments this year? I don't know. You know, I bring back your point that you spoke to my father about. and said, has Patrick Mahomes ever made a receiver or other players around him better? Yeah. And you've said this year proves it. Yeah, so at least for now. That he hasn't. That he hasn't done that on the third mm -hmm. Um But I think I think he, he can. I think he does have that capability. I think it's an off year for him. Okay. For sure. Yeah. Um, I'd agree with that, but th this is he, tough. Tua Tua and Mr Mr. Frogger over there <laughs> have very similar numbers. Yep. And, very, very similar. and one of the things All I the talked about around. today, Mike, was was numbers. Numbers don't tell you the whole story. That that's no. the problem with some stats. In a nutshell, Tua leads the league in a lot of areas. Does that mean he's the number one quarterback in the NFL? It does not. 
No. It does not. I would take a lot of quarterbacks over to a tongue of Iloa right now. I really would. I think he's good. Do you think it's more of the system? He's a system. He's a system, system quarterback. The system quarterback. He's a system quarterback the same way Jared Goff is a system quarterback. I think Jared Goff is very talented. I think Tua is very talented. But if I'm if I'm ranking these guys, they're good. They're not great. Allen and Mahomes are in the great category for me. And okay. I don't know that there's anybody okay. else up there. Maybe Burroughs is right on the outside, but he, he had a tough year even not being injured. He was injured 75% of the year. That's though, true. So. That's true. So I'm going to start with the Kelly Cast cruise predictions first here because okay. I need some time to think about this game. Okay. Dolphins and Chiefs. Mike, how do you feel in this matchup? Are you leaning one way? Is it similar to the Browns Texans feeling? Where are you at? Where's your head at? Man, the, the playoff it's down to the nitty gritty, right? This is where where us as as predictors get to prove how good we actually really are because it's down to the, yep. the nitty gritty, right? So, man, There's only so I, many games you one, can get wrong. <laughs> this one is 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 so difficult to me, but I. I, I'm going to go crazy. It's not that I'm leaning any one way, so I, I'm just going to spitball here, and, and I, I'm going to go all kinds of crazy, um, probably worse than when I went through that table over there, <laughs> and and say that this is the first time Mr. Mahomes has a uh, a first-round exit at home and, and, and play two, and, right. and the Dolphins finally win one in the cold. All right. Well, you solidified my pick with that because I know I, you're gonna go to the Chiefs. I've been it. thinking about Miami all day and about what I wanted to do in this matchup, and it comes down to the weather, Mike. It comes down to the fact that I think the Dolphins are the better team. I think the Dolphins have a better run game. I don't know about defense. I think the Chiefs are better in that department. Yeah, yeah. But I think the Dolphins least. are better on offense, and and the game yeah. is obviously about scoring points. I'm going to have to go Kansas City. I think Miami is inexperienced when it comes to the playoffs. And I, I talked about experience in the last one. That's why I might be wrong in one of these Man, games. Man, you got, you got me thinking, buddy. You're make me, making me want to change my mind, especially with that defense comment. I mean, there's like eight ranks in between the two defenses. <laughs> and, and now you're remember, giving me flashbacks of, of last week when, when the Bills were all, all over to it. Remember, these ranks here that you see are just in terms just, of yardage. Just numbers. I get it's, it. It's nothing else. It doesn't. It doesn't give you, you know, defensive pressures, sacks, anything like that. Th those yeah. are just the amount of yards allowed. So it's I'm kind sticking of sticking with my pick. Yeah, by the way, it's kind of in a blender. That's good. You know, I, I don't let one of the people on the Kelly Cash crew change their picks <laughs> for that reason. She's like, oh no, everybody else picks something else. Now I need to as well. Hey, it wouldn't be the reason that just because I you know, took it. I know, I know. <laughs> All right, guys, with that, we're going to close this video out. We want to thank you guys for watching. Please stay tuned for more on the KellyCast. Follow us on all social media channels at the KellyCast. That's Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and Twitter. We'll be seeing you with our NFC playoff predictions in the next one. As always, go Bills.